All right, so I'm going to make, a, I guess, a video, maybe a series of videos on how to make a pretty nice uh, ant nest entirely from scratch. Uh, it's made out of glass and a masonry material. Um, this is what I use. I keep ants in this. Works good. Um, works good for multiple species. Um, so, yeah, let's get started. Um, first, you're going to need some Portland cement and some gypsum or plaster of Paris. These can both be found at Home Depot, Lowe's, any, any hardware store. Um, usually the Portland cement um, is only in like 90 pound sacks, but it's like $10. So, you know, get the 90 pound sack, stick it in a tote like I did, and you'll be like set for life. You don't really need, this is like the thing you need the least of. Uh, this is a little more expensive. It's like 15 bucks or something like that for a 25 pound sack, but it's a lot lighter. So like that's one 90 pound sack. That's like three 25 pound sacks or something like that. So you can see um, it's a pretty noticeable difference. Um, this you'll be using a lot more of. Uh, this is like the body. This just adds uh, structure to it. The Portland cement adds the structure to it. The gypsum is like the main uh, body. The gypsum also sets up uh, almost immediately. Uh, Portland cement and sand on its own would take uh, hours. So, you know, that's no fun. So anyways, uh, what you need is a two to one ratio by volume of Portland cem uh, I'm sorry, of plaster of Paris to Portland cement. And these two have to be uh, sifted together, not just mixed together, but sifted together with a sifter. Um, there'll be specifically the Portland cement will be full of clumps and no matter how much you mix this up, it will not fully mix and you'll have little clumps of Portland cement all throughout the mixture. So I'm going to cut away and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I have uh, my mixture of two to one by volume plaster of Paris to Portland cement. So I just, I have like these 64 ounce containers I use. So it was 128 ounces of plaster of Paris to 64 ounces of Portland cement. That's just what I use. Um, you can do anything. And I don't even, to be honest, it's not that specific. I add, you know, roughly half of the amount of Portland cement as I do the plaster of Paris. Sometimes, you know, when I'm pouring my molds, I suddenly run out of the mixture and I'll mix up a little bit more um, on the fly. So it's not always, you know, I'm not over here with a scale measuring everything out. It works, you know, just roll with it. So I got my sifter, scoop a little bit up like so, kind of tap it and get to sifting. So I will do this, see how it's coming out, all sifted together. It's beautiful. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut away again, and then you're going to see a big old sifted container here. All right, I just wanted to come back to show you. So this is the Portland cement. Um, usually it's not this bad, like if you have a fresh um, fresh bag of Portland cement, or if you're really like anal about storing it and you make sure to keep all the moisture out. This it, it, You'll always have clumps, but they won't be nearly this uh, this, this bad. Like, you know, you could see it's a, it's a large amount in here. Um, it's not it's not hardened up. It's just kind of clumped together. You can force it through with your fingers fairly easily. Um, so that's what I do is I just force it through with my fingers. Um, sometimes I put it, you know, I'll screen it through into this into the unmixed container instead of into that. So it's all so it all gets sifted, you know, through the sifter. Um, sometimes I don't. Again, it's just kind of how I'm feeling. Um, sometimes I'll throw this away if I feel like, you know, really. Uh, here, I'll show you. This is the color I'm going for, like a like a light gray, um, not not as dark as the Portland cement, not as light as the gypsum. So if I see it becoming too light, I make sure to add more gyp, uh, Portland cement. If I see it uh, looking a little dark, I'll start throwing these little sh you know screenfuls away if I think I have enough Portland cement. Um, okay, so now you should have a big old container or, or whatever size, whatever size. Sorry to move the trash can. Whatever size container of your sifted uh, Portland cement and plaster of Paris. Now you need what's called an aggregate. Um, so what we're making here is, I guess technically it would be in the family of uh, gypsum cements. So the main binder is gypsum, which is then strengthened with the Portland cement. And then, but that's just, why won't this focus? 
That's just the aggregate. I mean, that's just the binder. The aggregate is the thing that the binder sticks to. So usually it's sand or gravel or something. Uh, we don't want that. It's too heavy. It's hard to carve through, and it just generally sucks. So we are going to be using uh, perlite. This giant bag was like $20. It is light as a feather. It has insulating properties. Um, perlite cement is actually used to make... Uh, it's used for insulating concrete for like uh, kilns and ovens and stuff. So it holds water. It is, I mean, it's like, it's everything you could ask for. So um, we're going to get some perlite. So first, now, if you mix up exactly the amount you want, uh, you know, just keep it in the same container. Um, I mix up just a kind of like a random amount. And then transfer what I want which in this case will be mostly all of it. I don't think I want all of it. So I'm doing this all one-handed. I'm not a, you know, not a professional YouTuber here. I'm a guy in a shop making an ant nest. So that's what I'm doing for that. Now, we are now going to first mix this up, you know, add the water to it, and then we're going to add the perlite to that, but first we have to get our molds ready. So we're going to walk over here. These are, you know what, one. Okay, these are our molds. Um, I'm doing two sizes, so these are the big ones. These are the small ones. Um, I can't recommend these things enough. These are silicone soap molds. I got them on Amazon. You can see this top one's kind of broke. I don't use that one anymore. Um, but the, there's like $10 for this one, but there's one, if you look, it's like $10 for three of these things. So that means you can make 18 blocks at a time, which, I mean, you can really crank out some nests if, uh, you know, that's your fancy. And then these are the bigger ones. So for the silicone, you don't need any kind of mold release spray, but um, this is not rigid. So if you pour, when you pour your material in here, it will expand. So I made this little, like, wooden frame thing so they can expand. That one's a little loose, but whatever. They can't expand. Keep them nice and square. Um, they don't need oil or anything. They'll come right out of there. Love this thing. If they had been bigger sizes, I would totally use them, but I haven't found them in bigger sizes, so I'm, you know, stuck with the small size. But for the big size, I use, ooh, this for later on in the video. Can't be seeing that, uh, you know, too soon. But anyways, this is for the bigger size. Uh, it's just plastic, some plastic box. Um, spray these with oil or they will get stuck in there. And then also drill holes in the bottom. So see these four holes? That's so I could get the mold out of there because, or get the casting out of the mold because without those holes, you know, it'd be <laughs> super duper hard to get that out of there without breaking the mold. So when it's dry, I peel the tape off and press it out from behind. Works like a charm. Um, so that's the molds. Next, you need uh, two containers of water is what I do. And then I color mine. If you're not coloring yours, uh, forget about this part. But see, this is Quickcrete. Um, it's just iron oxide based uh, pigment. So this is basically rust, just iron. Um, it's inert. Ants don't mind, or at least not the ones that live in my nests. Um, so what I do is I make like my pigment concentrate so to speak so I'll add this stuff's super duper like potent but I'll add a good bit enough so that it's too strong enough so that using that looks cool enough so that using all of this would make it way too red and then that's my water so when I add a, I'll add a little bit of this and once I feel like I have enough I'll add this and then you know that'll be my mix so I'm going to cut Okay, this is the mix, um, already stirred up. Um, you can see this is like water. I mean, it is not thick at all because we are about to add a bunch of perlite to this. So if this was thick and we added a bunch of perlite, it wouldn't be enough water. And if it ever was too dry, it would just get all like chalky and wouldn't work. So make sure it's nice and watery. And now I just kind of do this by the eyeball. So I start adding perlite. And also, this stuff sets up fast, and actually the iron oxide in the pigment makes it set up even faster. So you have about 10 minutes max once, you, once water hits this thing to, you know, make your move. So add perlite, mix it all together. 
needs more perlite. All right, I need both hands for this. All right, see how thick this is now? How it's almost like a paste? This is perfect. That's what you want. So you want a lot of perlite and you want watery, a watery mix. So I'm going to put this in the molds. Like I said, the clock is ticking, uh, especially for me, so i got to hurry on here. So I'm going to get back to you when this is in the molds. Okay, so I have uh, the molds poured. You can see it's pretty messy. Um, with these, I fill it up right to, with this one I fill it to the top because I, um, you know, it's pretty shallow. This one I fill up to the same height as this one, so they're both the same. And then these, I overfill. So I fill these, I fill these past the fill line, and then right as they start to set, I'll come with like a wide, like a putty knife, and I'll, I'll, I'll scrape them smooth. Um, that's just the best method I've found for getting like clean blocks. Um, so... Yeah, I'm going to cut away once again. Actually, I think this is going to be the end of the video. Um, mainly, I just found this trap draw queen. Let me see if I can focus. I can't focus. Whatever. I just found an Odontomachus uh, Varenus queen. So... Didn't even have any cotton, but I always keep test tubes in my car, but I couldn't find the cotton ball. So I had to tape it up with some tape and a rag. So I'm going to let these dry, go to my house, tube this up, and show you the next part, I guess, in another video. So stay tuned, I guess. All right, it's a few days later. Um, everything's dried out now. Um, these are the molds. I don't know where the other one is. Um, I'm not really working on those, but these are some of the molds that uh, I cast in the last video. Um, the drier the better uh, for these, just because the drier it is, the cleaner lines you get. So uh, in the last video I said like three, three to four days or something like that. Um, that's like minimum time. Um, the longer you wait, I mean, if these things are bone dry, you can get real clean lines when you're cutting out all the chambers and stuff. So uh, give it a week. Uh, you know, if you really can't wait three or four days, you could really do it the same day. Uh, you could do it like an hour later, but. Like I said, the later you wait, or the longer you wait, the uh, nicer everything will look in the end. Like uh, these, you can see, I did these three-ish days after they had dried. And you can see, it's not the cleanest. I even sanded it a little. It's not the, you know, I'm not very happy with these. They look okay. From a distance, they look okay. Um, just all in all, though, they could be better. I actually have one that's much better that I was planning on using in this video, but I left it at work. So I won't be able to get it till Monday. So yeah. Anyways, so the next step, after these have dried and you've removed them from the molds, you're going to want to draw out your chambers. Um, you don't really have to draw them out. Uh, that's just what I do. You know, the classic, draw a little border, draw where your chambers are going to be, and get to town. Um, I'm going to cut away and I'll show you how I drill them out and everything next. All right, I have um, finished drawing them all out. I'm in the middle of now drilling them out. Um, for this part, I use a, a drill press. Um, this is like, in my opinion, far and away the easiest way to do it. So what I'll do is just, I, I have a normal cheap masonry bit on there, not a normal drill bit, a masonry bit. And I just do a bunch of plunge cuts over and over, not really over and over, but just around the outline of each chamber and then I can just crack off the middle part. And then I will take a normal drill bit and basically use it like an end mill and use that to go in here and clean up all these little like, you know, whatever you want to call them, marks from the, from the drill bit. Um, the reason I use it with a masonry bit and not, I don't just do it initially with this is because this would last about a minute. Um, drilling through this masonry stuff, it would just dull it out really quick. It still does dull it very, very fast um, just using these you know, the sides of it, but it does last substantially longer. I could use a carbide and it'd last way longer, but, you know, I'm not trying to spend like $80 for a drill bit for making these ant nests. You know, this was like five bucks. So that's what I do. Um, I'm going to cut away again. I don't have any finished nests uh, on hand. I realize now I've never shown you what the end product is going to be. Um, hopefully in the next little update, I will run back to my house and grab a finished nest and show you. I have one with that trap jaw queen in it now. She's laid a couple eggs. Pretty happy. So I'm going to cut away again and I'm going to show you a big old stack of finished nests or finished blocks and one completed nest. Okay, 
I've got everything all milled out. Um, you can see that each one of these, well first of all, so you got nice clean lines. Everything's looking good. Now you can see that these all have various chambers that are drilled all the way through. Um, this is going to be where, uh, on the back side of this, there's going to be steel mesh here, and then this is going to sit over a tank of water. So that's going to be how we get uh, the humidity for the nest. So when you're drilling it out, make sure to uh, drill out the floors of a couple chambers because the next step is going to be putting the uh, mesh on the back. So I'm going to start doing that right now. Okay, so I kind of forgot to record some parts, but it was fine. Um, the next step is just to take some stainless steel mesh. Uh, I don't know like how fine this is, like the grade, but you could see it's just fine stainless steel mesh. You can get it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Um, and cover that. I, what I do is I cover the whole, whole bottom of it with a pretty thick layer of silicone and then just lay a piece on there. And I'll do that to all of them and then while it's still wet, I'll take Ideally, a big piece of plastic. Um, you could spray it down with oil if that's your fancy. You really don't need to. Um, this egg crate works good as well. I couldn't find the piece of plastic I use. It has to be plastic. It can't be like glass or anything that silicone actually sticks to because you don't want it to stick to this plastic, you know, like long term. So you lay them all down, put the silicone, put the mesh, put the plastic or egg crate, um, and then you get something heavy you know, like I was using this paint can, and you set that down on, and that will ensure that the uh, mesh sticks to the thing and is nice and like flat on there. And then, but it obviously will, it'll make everything like ooze out. You don't want that. Because, excuse the dirty nails, but you know, I'm building something here. Um, because you're gonna be putting glass up against this. This whole thing is gonna be surrounded in glass and have glass on top. So, um, you need to trim it. I just use scissors, trim it up. It doesn't have to be not neat. It just has to be, I mean, it doesn't have to be too neat. It just has to be like, that won't work. I have to get rid of that. It just has to be smooth along these walls. Any little protrusion and then the glass won't sit flat. So that's what your, I mean, this is like, this, this part is now finished. Oh, not this one, because that's not trimmed. But like this one, this is a finished like block or whatever. And so then we gotta put glass around it, put a little, uh, epoxy resin in these, we don't really have to do that, but I just don't like those little like bubbles and stuff, just to fill in any imperfections. Um, so I'll show you the next step shortly. Actually, I think this is gonna be the end of the second video. I think uh, next we will start cutting the glass. I'll show you how to cut the glass and what all is, that'll be, that'll be part number three. So this is the end of part number two. Hope you are, hope you understood everything. Hope you now have a nice little nest block or whatever. So I will see you in the next video.